So let's talk about anal ovulation, which is what um, many women can complain about. And there can be many reasons. Uh, the first thing we can talk about is menopause. This is actually a physiologic process, which is uh, related to the decline in ovarian follicles as you age. So remember, as uh, in utero, you probably have like uh, females have millions of follicles. When they're born, by that time they decreases to about a couple hundred thousand and as you age you get a gradual decrease in number and as you decrease in number uh, you get decreased estrogen production because remember follicles are where your estrogen is a majority of estrogen is made and once you get to a certain threshold where you you don't have enough, have enough estrogen made your uh, menstrual cycle start working and so the definition of menopause is 12 months of amenorrhea that means 12 months without a menstrual period and the average age of menopause is 51 years old. But before that, you're going to see some irregular menstrual cycles. So what does that mean? You're going to have, basically, you're going to have menstrual periods that come every five months instead of, or every three months. Or you're going to have extra heavy bleeding or less, or light bleeding. And that's going to happen, for, it can depend for, for each patient. But the, on average, it's about four years of this irregular menstrual periods before you finally hit that 12 months without having a menstrual period. And then symptoms can be quite varied. Um, you can have vasomotor symptoms, which are including hot flashes and night sweats. So hot flashes are where you suddenly feel really hot, you feel really warm, you need to take off your sweater. And this can be really distressing, actually. And then you can also think about mental symptoms. So you can have some mood swings, you can have irritability, uh, and also just insomnia where you just can't sleep at night. And that can be, very, again, also very distressing. And then there's atrophic features because estrogen is key to maintaining like the vagina. It's key for bone, uh, bone health. So if you lose the estrogen, your veg vagina can become dry, it can become uh, atrophic and thinned out, and you can be at risk for osteoporosis. And the labs will show a greatly increased FSH. Again, this relates to estrogen. All of this is due to estrogen, okay? Um, the FSH, estrogen normally blocks it. So if you run out of estrogen, then FSH goes up. Um, and then going back to the vasomotor symptoms, the estrogen is, uh, how this happens is estrogen is super important in the thermal regulation. So it's in the homeostatic uh, uh, function in the brain. So if you run out of the estrogen, your homeostatic function goes all out of whack. And that's why you get those vasomotor symptoms. Um, so the treatment is you can replace estrogen. You can get estrogen replacement therapy because remember, estrogen here is key. You only do this if the uh, symptoms are severe enough to impa impact functional capacity or if the patient is uh, in management and pause prematurely. And, you, do, and you are, we are pretty stingy about this estrogen because um, there's some side effects that we want to avoid, um, namely breast cancer, endometrial cancer, um, some heart problems. So uh, premature ovarian failure, um, another name is primary ovarian insufficiency insufficiency it's the same thing as menopause it's just basically when it happens before 40 years old and it can just happen by itself or there can be some underlying medical condition that causes you to uh, your ovaries to fail and you see this exact same symptoms in menopause but it's just in a younger woman and remember in these patients you do give estrogen no matter what um, you want to protect their bones you want to um, protect their their health in general so the next thing is an ovulatory cycle. I've already talked about this in the previous lecture, but this is uh, basically what happens is you get lack of ovulation, and often this is in menarche or menopause when your hypothalamic pituitary uh, axis is, is undeveloped. So it's not working very well, so your estrogen is not getting secreted very consistently. And this leads to con uh, continuation of the estrogen-driven follicular phase. So you get estrogen follicular phase, your endometrium grows, and then there's no progesterone uh, luteal phase because there's no ovulation, so there's no corpus luteum. There's no, uh, there's no withdrawal bleeding, and then you get more estrogen. And so what happens is you're going to get irregular bleeding because eventually your, uh, your hyperplasia is going to outgrow the blood supply. So you get ischemia and then there's sloughing. So that leads to irregular bleeding and often can be heavy because as you can see, there's a lot more glands to, to bleed out now. Uh, now PCOS, this is super classic, super key. So you're gonna see, you're definitely gonna see this on your test. Um, this is pathophysiology is related to insulin resistance. So if you're 
not responding well to insulin, your body just makes more, and hyperinsulinemia can lead to obesity, and it can also stimulate theca cells to make androgens. So it can lead to obesity, it can make androgens. So these androgens are converted to estrogen and fat tissues, and so this leads to feedback inhibition. Remember, so it, uh, the estrogen goes up and blocks the GnRH, blocks FSH and LH. So now you don't have ovulation and you get on ovarian cysts. So presentation is basically everything I just talked about. So you get that you get a bunch of androgens, so you get acne and hirsutism. You get um, ovarian issues. You know you have irregular menstrual cycles and polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. The reason you get polycystic ovaries is because, again, it's the anovulation. It's the, those cysts are unruptured follicles. And let me show you, this is a bunch of cysts on the ovaries on ultrasound. So you have a bunch of unruptured follicles that just grow and become develop into cysts. And then your irregular menstrual cycles are because you're, um, you're not ovulating, so it's like we just talked about before. And finally, insulin resistance is classic for uh, diabetes mellitus 2, and then you get that acanthosis nigricans, which again is classic for diabetes 2, which is related to hyperinsulinemia. Insulin, which is a growth factor leading to increased growth of these skin cells out here, leading to thickening and the darkening. And again, obesity, which is again related to that hyperinsulinemia. Treatment is to lose weight, first of all, that's number one. And not only does that help with the diabetes, it helps decrease estrogen formation. And then a second thing you can do is you can give them oral contraceptive, oral contraceptive pills. So that is gonna restore your normal menstrual cycles because you get this nice, um, you get this nice estrogen that's gonna cause your endometrium to grow. And then, um, you also get some progesterone, and then when you stop the pill for a week, you're gonna basically get that endometrial sloughing. So you get you can prevent endometrial hyperplasia. And then if you want fertility, if your patient wants to have kids, the two things you can give them: metformin and clomiphene. And uh, we can talk about those a little bit later.